All right, man, Sketch Pad Podcast, we back. So today, we're going to be reacting to the top five moments of the third debate, the third Republican debate from Vivek Ramaswamy. The guy's, the guy's on fire right now. So let's get into it. Who raised you? That last bar was crazy. Oh my God. Uh, children are too young to make those type of choices for themselves. You know, that's why they have parents. Oh, eat each other. What? Yo, I yeah, can't I understand it neither. All right, yeah, man. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Hit the, hit the notification bell. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be notified. Also, too, YouTube is doing something with us. We're trying to get the AdSense fixed. We're still in the partner program, but for some reason, we can't receive anything because AdSense, we, we already went through that. So if you want to donate to the Sketch the Sketchpad podcast, link's in the description. You know what it is. And we also, too, have a have a rumble channel now so if you don't like youtube go follow us on rumble all the same episodes will be loaded and we have another rumble channel that's coming it's called sketchpad rumble it's gonna be different from this but y'all gonna love it trust and believe all right so vivek ramaswamy the goat right now we're gonna play his top five moments of the third republican debate let's go The Trump Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. I say this as a member of my generation. I'm 38 years old. I'm the youngest person ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. The reason my generation has lost our sense of national pride in part is because people in my generation feel like the American dream isn't available to them. And part of the reason why is we burdened them with four-year college degrees that did not serve their head start on the American dream. People will be more proud of a country if we're all making more money in that country. This is how we revive national pride and our identity, and it will take a CEO in the White House with zero-based budgeting, by the way, to take Mr. on the federal Ramis, debt Mommy, to get you. this job done. <sighs> Bro. Bars! <laughs> <laughs> Bars! Oh my God! <laughs> I ain't never seen this guy before. I mean, like bars. Oh my God, bro! This guy—he looks like the president. Are you kidding me? Facts. Come Facts. on, bro. Come on. Let's man, let's keep my... it going. Let's keep it going. Oh my God. I want to be careful to avoid making the mistakes from the neocon establishment of the past. Corrupt politicians in both parties spent trillions, killed millions, made billions for themselves in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, fighting wars that sent thousands of our sons and daughters, people my age, to die in wars that did not advance anyone's interests, adding $7 trillion to our national debt. And Joe Biden sold off our foreign policy. Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, got a $5 million bribe from Ukraine. That's why we're sending $200 billion back to that same country. The fact of the matter is the Republican Party is not that much better. You have the likes of Nikki Haley, who stepped down from her time at the UN. Bankrupt or in debt is, was her family. Then she becomes a military contractor. She joins the board of Boeing and otherwise, and is now a multimillionaire. So I think that that's wrong when Republicans do it or Democrats do it. That's the choice we face. Do you want oh, a leader from a different generation yeah. to put this country first? Or do you want Dick Cheney in three inch heels? All right, Mr. In which Robert case, Swami. we've got two of them on stage Mr. Oh Yo. my God. <laughs> Yo. Hold on. Wait before you go to. Oh. Yo. Didn't you just say this? That there has not been a, rep uh, 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 a person that has called out their own party? 
for a bit bullsh what <laughs> tell me if that's not crazy this oh. guy this guy went on on his he he said listen you want to hear the truth this this chick right here she's the most corrupt <laughs> the one the lady next to him in his own party <laughs> she's the most corrupt her she the one her family was bankrupt oh. and then she went and start working for a defense contractor and and then start and then now her family's multi-millionaires it's corruption on both sides yo you know how crazy that is for a politician mm -hmm. to literally come out and say that there's corruption in their own party yeah <laughs> Was crazy. He called yeah. her, he called her Dick Cheney in three inch heels. That's crazy because everybody knows who Dick Cheney was. He was a war hawk. He liked the war. He liked war, and she loves mm -hmm. war. Nikki Haley loves war. That's all she talks about because she she works for a defense contractor. So this is what it is. So look, man, we're gonna keep this thing going, man. Oh man, woo. Weigh in on this. See, sure. Ways that you can improve people's financial condition in the short term. Right. And as a CEO, the economic question is core to my vision and policy prescription for this country. Increase the supply of everything. It's the law of supplies and demand. Increase the supply of energy. That brings down the cost of energy, grows the economy. Drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear. Increase the supply of labor in this country. Stop using our taxpayer money to pay people more to stay at home instead of to go to work. Increase the supply of housing. People don't talk about this one in the Republican Party. The land use restrictions are constricting the supply of housing. That's making housing more expensive for ordinary Americans across this country. So that's the true answer. And I think it takes a CEO in the White House who actually understands this to get this done. Because Americans at home, they know the Bidenomics is a lie. Prices are going up. Interest rates and mortgages to buy your home are going up, but wages have remained flat. That's the hard diagnosis for our economy. Oh my God. Whoa. <laughs> this guy, yo. Yo. This guy, you, you played NBA Jam before, right? He's on mm -hmm. fire. Yeah. What? Yo, he's dunking on everybody right now, bro. He's dunking on everybody. It's on NBA Jam. Jams it in. Yeah. He's heating up. Is it the shoes? <laughs> He's on fire. <laughs> That's him. That's him. Just imagine playing Vivek Ramaswamy in NBA Jam. He did that. Yo, it was oh. yo, this it's like this was like watching Michael Jordan play. You see Tim Scott look, he's looking like this guy is on fire. <laughs> like, for real. Come this on, dude, This dude is like a, a and one mixtape. He crossing people over. Yeah. He, like he hitting them with the sham. He hit people with the sham god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> this is crazy. We've talked a lot about foreign wars tonight, but we're in the middle of a war right here at home. It's a war not between black and white or Democrat and Republican. It's between those of us who believe in our founding ideals and love this country and a fringe minority who hates the United States of America. And I think it's going to take a commander in chief to lead us to victory in that war, who first of all knows that we're in a war, second of all can't be captured by the special interests along the way, mm. but third is from the next generation, somebody with fresh legs to lead us to victory. I'll shut down the deep state, I'll declare economic independence from China, I'll keep us out of World War III and then revive national pride in this country. I also want to close with one message to the Democrat Party. End this farce that Joe Biden is going to be your nominee. We know he's not even the president of the United States. He's a puppet for the managerial class. So have the guts to step up and be honest about who you're actually going to put up so we can have an honest debate. Biden should step aside, end his candidacy now so we can see whether it's Newsom or Michelle Obama or whoever else. Right, just just tell us the 20. truth so we can have an honest debate. <laughs> Come on, bro. He got my vote. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I love Trump. That's my boy, but this nigga got my vote. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> he got my vote. <laughs> I'm over the vet, bro.
If he's the nominee, he's going to win the presidency, bro. This dude is on fire, bro. We, we, listen, man, we're going we gonna to keep rolling, and we're going to talk about this. This is crazy. Ambassador. I was. I think there's something deeper going on in the Republican Party here, and I am upset about what happened last night. We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. We have a cancer in the Republican establishment. Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my, yield my time to you. And frankly, look, the people there cheering for losing in the Republican Party. <laughs> Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. You think the Democrats, and we've got Kristen Welker here, you think the Democrats would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Kristen, I'm going to use this time because this is actually about you and the media and the corrupt media establishment. Ask you the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. Mr. Ross. Oh, my this God. This is how we get Yo. country back. <laughs> oh my God. We need accountability because this media rigged the 2016 election. They rigged the 2020 election with a Hunter Biden laptop story. Mr. Ramos, and they're going to rig this election. Your time is up. Accountability. Let me turn to Yo, you. Yo, Governor States. Christie. Yo, listen, man. Oh, what the fuck? Yo, he ain't no rapper. Well, he's about to get hit in the mask right now. He's getting the mask right now. He's getting the mask. What? Now. What? Yo. Hold up, man. We hold up, man. Yo, oh my God. I had to get up from the chair. Yo, how this motherfucker. I mean to call him a motherfucker, but this guy. I never seen anyone call out the media like that. No one no, ever did either. that. I mean, don't get me wrong, Trump did his thing. You got to understand, right? This is this what I'm going to say. Look, I'm a Trump guy. I like Trump. It's just sorry to tell y'all. This is what it is. But Trump can't articulate his points like this guy can. It, like speaking wise, maybe but on paper, maybe something different. Trump's a whole different animal when it comes to business deals. But when it comes to articulating yourself, this is this is this is the Republicans Obama right here. This is a little bit different, but this is the Republicans Obama. Let, let me just be clear here. Of course, I want Trump to be the president, but who I think would make more of an impact as a president, this guy. You know what I'm saying? I believe that <clears throat> even if he wasn't the president, let's say Trump became the president, he has to pick him as the vice president. There's no way in the world you're going to not pick this guy as the vice president. He should be the vice president. Simple as that. Because if anything happens, he would be the president. He's the youngest politician, I believe, to run for office. And he, he just looked like everybody else on that stage, because I watched the whole thing. Everybody else on that stage, he made them, didn't, they didn't look like presidential candidates. They looked like people who were vying for office or trying to grab a, a spot, but they didn't look like a president. This guy looked like the president. He looked like, yeah, I'm the president. These guys just jobbers. They just work. They, this is Mike Rotondo, and this is Barry Horowitz, and this is Iron Mike Sharp, and this is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a Brooklyn Brawler, and this is uh what's one of the female wrestler names that was a jobber. This is these people are. They work for the company, but they not they not that guy. I'm that guy. I'm that guy. 
I'm going to say things that they're not going to ever say because I don't need their money. I don't need your money. I don't need nothing from y'all. That's what we need, somebody like that. Who don't need nothing from us. They do everything genuinely. He don't need the money. He's a, he's a he's damn near a billionaire. And he's smart as hell. He's not no stupid dude. He knows everything. He was saying stuff that they didn't even want us. They didn't even know what he was talking about. Some of the clips that they didn't play, he didn't play, but we'll review that another time. Anyway, what's your thoughts, man? Man, um, that was my first time actually seeing the guy, uh, actually hearing him speak. Um, I was blown away, man. I was blown away. Now, if I was to get into politics fully and enjoy it, he'll be one of the guys I watch. You know what I mean? Because he <clears throat> he spoke on so many things. <clears throat> he touched so many topics that those mofos on the other side was not even trying to dabble into. If this guy was a battle rapper, he'd be loaded Lux. <laughs> Straight up. He'd be loaded Lux. You know what I'm saying? Because he exactly. was he was barring these guys to death. Like I was like shocked. I said, "What did he just say?" He called out his own party. How many times have we went on record, bro, and said that there's nobody that would make make their own party take accountability? He just said it. He can't, he he called out his party. He called out the Republican Party at a, at a Republican convention with all Republicans, and he let them know, like, look, we became a party of losers. He literally said that. He literally mm -hmm. said the Republican Party became a party of losers because we mm -hmm. don't want to take accountability. We let this chick since 2017 run all this, and she's been running this, and we've been losing. She and he even said, I will yield my time to you for you to come up here and resign because you are not working. You got you have people who are part of the Democratic Party questioning, questioning Republican nominees. How is that? It's basically saying, like, look, you should have Elon Musk, Joe Rogan, and Tucker Carlson was the one should be on this and be the moderators. We would have a thousand more people, a hundred thousand, triple the more views would be in the millions. And we can get our message out to more people. But you got these yeah. people right here, you got um these people who are not a part of the Republican Party questioning Republican candidates. And they're part of the they work for the establishment. That's basically what we were saying. They work for the establishment. And you got them doing the moderation? Why? These people are, what makes these people, they, the, 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 legacy media is dead. That's yeah, he uh, he basically was saying that y'all need to update your way of thinking and put people out there that are about the people. people put people out there that are, in, that are in the front lines that they know what's going on. Exactly. And those, Joe Rogan, Elon Musk. They of this the, of this generation. They know exactly what's going on with the young people. They know what's going on with social media. They know all that stuff, man. Like I, when he said that, I was like, "Oh snap!" I didn't even think of it like that. He, I was like, "Wow." He called the <clears throat> chick out and said, "You was pushing Russian disinformation for years." Mm -hmm. So in order for us to get our party back, you need to take accountability for it. Mm -hmm. So why did you do that? And he told her to answer the question. And all she did was smile because she knew she was caught. It's like, what can you really do? It's like, that is the greatest opener ever in a debate. I don't care what nobody said that, that you can't top that because that's, that's, that's not, that's a gift. That's not planned. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. like somebody they're that's a gift you get what i'm saying 
That's not something that's that 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 even if you planned it, the way he executed that, you can't nobody can't copy that. Especially no. politicians who are or beholden to donors who have to rely on their donors. You have to be one of those people that don't rely on anybody. This is why Trump and this guy right here, you never see politicians like that ever in life. You never see anybody like these two. You know what I'm saying? I know people hate Trump or whatever. I know people who probably watch us. They like Trump, but <clears throat> you never see politicians like this. But I tell you right now, if Trump's the nominee, which I believe he's still going to be the nominee, he has to pick this guy as the vice president. Because there'll be this would be it'll be the dumbest thing ever if he doesn't. That'd be so stupid if he don't pick him as the vice president. You have to. He has to be the vice president. You can't pick somebody else. He has to be vice president, and Tucker Carlson has to be secretary of uh, uh, what they call uh uh not secretary of state the uh press secretary. Ultimate team right there. You make Tucker Carlson the press secretary. What? And you make Vivek as the vice president and you're the president? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Like, I'm just saying. What, bro, if, what, if, what, if, what if Vivek wins? What if Vivek if wins? If Vivek wins, he's going to win the presidency. Hands down. If if Vivek, well, I put it to you like this. Trump is in such a lead that he, he's the nominee. He's a, he, Even though Trump wasn't at the debate, they asked the poll who won the debate. You know what they said won? Trump. Even though he wasn't there, they had ninety percent. They said eighty percent of people said Trump won the debate. He wasn't even at the debate. You know what I'm saying? But that goes to show you what he's basically what Vivek saying. You cheering for a bunch of losers? Like you wouldn't even watch the debate, but you're saying Trump won, but he wasn't even in the debate. So how you saying he won? You get what I'm saying? That goes right to what he's saying. We became a party of losers who cheer for losers. <coughs> Not to say Trump's a loser, but it's saying like basically he's saying like, well, y'all not paying attention. Y'all just voting for whoever. That's it. But Trump's Trump is in. the, So he's he's in the lead of nominees. So he's he's like 50 points ahead of everybody because everybody wants him to be president again, at least on the Republican side. He did. So he's like 50 points ahead of everybody. Vivek, I believe, is in. He's probably in second place now after that performance. He's in second place now. So it would be Trump is has fifty percent of of out of a hundred. Then you got Ron DeSantis. I mean, then you have Nikki Haley. I think she's like seven percent. So you just imagine Trump's fifty, and these other people are below ten. They not even reach. They didn't even reach ten percent. Mm-hmm. So obviously they're gonna make Trump the nominee. They have to because at this point, why wouldn't they? And Joe Biden, when he said the thing about Joe Biden, Joe Biden is not the now. He's not gonna be the nominee. They, they're, stall, they're stalling it out because they know whoever they put, if they put anybody, doesn't matter who it is, <clears throat> Trump is going to smoke them. It don't matter. They know this. So they're trying their hardest to hold off and say it's Joe Biden because Joe Biden is the only one that has a chance. Everybody else, it's a dub. You know what I'm saying? They know that. <clears throat> now, only two people, Gavin Newsom. I highly doubt Michelle Obama is going to run. I don't believe that. Cause that'd be, that's a that's an automatic L. You know what I mean? Automatic L for them. Cause she's she's not a politician. She don't really know anything about politics. That's an automatic L. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Gavin Newsom at least he's a California governor. At least he what's his name? But RFK, RFK Jr. He is uh, uh he's running as an independent now. But then you got this other guy. I can't remember his name. He just jumped in it. And now this other guy, Joe Manchin, might jump in it too. So he got some competition. But you notice that they haven't said anything because the, the, the Democratic Party basically is about they want to keep things the way it is because they know that if they mention anybody, the Republicans are going to go. They're going to go in full attack mode. But having somebody like Vivek in their corner, they really don't support Vivek because he don't ask them for anything. Like, like he don't get money from them. You know what I'm saying? So when he's calling out the Republicans and the establishment, he's basically saying like, okay, when I, if I become president, y'all out of here. And they don't want that. 
they don't want a president, a person like that in the office. That's the same way thing that happened um, to Trump. When I become president, yeah, I'm getting y'all out of here. And you know what I'm saying? Because everybody wanted, they want the things to keep going along, getting along. But either way, man, vex that guy. That's all I can say. I don't know if you got something else. Not then we. Nah, man. <clears throat> nah, that was uh, that was magnificent. Yeah, man. I'm gonna watch yeah. more. I'm gonna watch more of his uh, videos, man. Uh, what he's talking about. Look, I'm gonna tell Thank you like you. this. He's been. This is why he's. This is why this guy to me. If 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 he's the nominee, he's winning the presidency. This is why. He's the only candidate that goes to the hood. Now he's a Republican. But he goes to the hood to talk to people. You can find him in Kensington. He was in Kensington, bro. What? Yes. He was in Kensington. This is what I mean. Like, you don't see oh, none man. of these politicians doing that. This guy oh, got his haircut in the hood. <laughs> Talking to people. He goes everywhere. He's on every podcast. From right to left, it doesn't matter. He goes on any podcast, whether you go on the right or you on the left. He don't just choose to go on. You any of those candidates on stage? They all, except for Chris Christie, which I, I don't like him either. Anyway, but he's the only one that. But he's a puppet. But Chris Christie, he goes on on uh, on the left because he hates Donald Trump. So since he hates Donald Trump, of course he's gonna go on left podcasts. But Ravek was on Valuetainment, The Breakfast Club. Uh, I don't think he was on Joe Rogan yet. Um, so many different podcasts. He was on a podcast that had more that less viewerships than we do. <laughs> like literally, he was on a podcast that had less subscribers than us. He's everywhere, yo. Just type his name in. All the podcast comes up. Like for real, this guy's special, man. I think you only get you only get one chance for a person like this, bro. Hey, we need to find this guy's email. And get him on our show. Look, man. I got some questions for him. Go, go on, go on. Uh, go do your do your due diligence, man. Go on. What's the name? Go on Google and say how can we get Vivek to come on our podcast? What we need to do or something like that. And we get him on here. We out of here. I was like, see y'all. We rich now. <laughs> no, no, we wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't do that. <laughs> All right, man. We out of here. See y'all. Sketchpad. Peace, man. Shit crazy.